Welcome back, guys, to Clash Royale League Asia. We're back uh, after we saw the first round going over to the side of Pono Sports. The Detonation game it really could not pull the strength together to pick up the first win. They have been looking for it. Now they're uh, on their second try. We're going to go on to see them on a third try. Of course, after suffering a loss against Pono Sports, it's not the best momentum uh, you want to go with. But really important to see you know, whether they can pick up the first win. But again, it's a very difficult team here. Yeah, this is a difficult, difficult team to try and turn your luck around against because we saw last week that game with were just so, so strong. Amaratsu, KK, and Yuhiro are here today. They're resting Shun by the look of it. Yeah. Which is a shame for us because I really want to see Shun play some more, hey. but we're not going to see it today. Got to give that superstar a rest, uh, especially when you feel like you can win even without him. And see uh, how the other three players do because it's been mostly about uh, these two players, uh, mostly by Shun, and really the attention has gone to solely towards him. Uh, but we're going to look at Detonation Gaming at Asgard once again. Yeah, we have Lewis, Ku, Pirameki, and Matsumoton once again. They've got to be feeling the pressure right now. I mean, they want to just leave the group, at least uh, with one win. Uh, you know, they failed to do so against, uh, we talked about Fav Gaming, we also talked about you know, them going up against uh, Pono Sport just last game, and now they're here against, trying to do it against this really tough side we know, you know as a game with, one of our highest expectations for a Japanese team, uh, according to week one's performance. Yeah, and Detonation Gaming just have not showed any kind of consist. Oh, wait, uh, they are showing consistency, but it's not the oh right no. consistency, right? It's the worst consistency you want to show. Just losing and losing. Uh, they have done that for the second attempt and just come right off the loss and uh, trying to do it again for the third time. Of course, you say a lot of pressure, Simon. Uh, of course, for this team, just trying to do it against now we know uh, might be the strongest team in Japan. Game with, of course, even without Shun. But they still feel like uh, this team can get the job done and put another win on the board and make uh, the really the bipolar result of game with having all wins, uh, whereas the uh, obviously the detonation game might just go out with all three losses. Yeah, once again, neither team is playing anyone who's played one v one before. We haven't seen uh, we haven't seen KK or Pirameki play one v one yet, so I can't really give any kind of idea of what they've played in the past. But these players have a lot more information they've researched on based on the 20 challenge the 20 win challenge and they've done all this extra research probably looking at other players on the ladder like if they know their in-game game attack they follow what decks they've been playing and what decks they've been trying out so these players probably do know each other especially as they're at the top of the ladder as well you see Peter Mekki, uh on the other side I mean very very nervous about his standings right here he's gonna be representing his team to hopefully uh, bring a victory but victory is a war that hasn't really come about uh, for the side of Detonation Gaming, sadly. Let's see really if they can do because we want to just exert all the power uh, over to Detonation Gaming so that you know we can hopefully support them to see their first win for them because it's uh, kind of sad to see, you know, it's hard to see this team really struggling uh, to get the job done. But we're going to see the band cards coming from both sides now. Yeah, Elixir Collector for game with, not surprising, but Pirameki banning the Goblin Barrel. Wow. Interesting choice. We haven't. I don't think we've seen a Goblin Barrel ban so far, right? I think we've seen it once, maybe, but it's so forgettable because it really doesn't signific uh, signify uh, what the current meta kind of holds, even in one v one. You either go really heavy or you just go with all the chip damage. And obviously, yeah, the Goblin Barrel can be a part of that chip damage, but I think there's more important aspects uh, to what you make a, out of a really uh, effective. Uh, chip damage comp and like Goblin Barrel, there are other cars uh, that I would think I would pr prioritize if I was Pyramiki. But it feels like that's the biggest threat of danger uh, for the side of Destination Gaming. Yeah, six months ago, we saw a lot of Goblin Barrel, like CCGS, Korea, especially. There was a lot, I think there was a lot in the rest of the world, the SEA tournaments. Goblin Barrel was a very popular card, but his popularity has dropped off a cliff lately in professional games. We do not see that many barrels because it's so easily countered by a log by as electro wizard which yeah. we see a lot not a full counter you still take one or two hits but it's still a counter still getting the good trade uh, when it comes to the elixir uh, in and out phase of when you're trying to defend against the golden barrel 
It is quite easily done. There are so many things that can get a, You can get an even trade with an arrow even. But you can get a plus one trade with a zap, you say. Even a log is there, the most common uh, way of getting out. So with those spell cards now being a common place with most decks now, just don't see the Goblin Barrel as much as it can uh, be quite quite easily countered even if you pull the opponent by surprise. Yeah, so I'm very interested what he was trying to get accomplished by banning the Goblin Barrel. It just seems like a wasted ban a little bit. Is there any decks that you can think of where the Goblin Barrel would be a hard counter to? I mean, I would, s I would think that, you know, when you're trying to use a full-out Goblin deck, uh, when you're talking about the recent Goblin Challenge that we did, kind of reminds me of what I kind of thought was a good strategy of using the Dark Goblin on the side, just putting out the main damage from the back. While you're focused on that, put the Goblin Barrel on the other side, and then you might have to use a log for a lot of the other Goblins, you know, the Goblin Spears, and we're talking about the, the regular Goblins, Goblin Gang. All those things require really one of those spells that you need to knock out a Goblin Barrel in the first place, so the Zap, even the log, being used to wipe out other sources of Goblins. So when you can mix and match a little bit and you've already wasted out uh, the spell coming from your opponent to that could potentially uh, counter out Obviously, the Goblin Barrel, you could send that out for a little bit of surprise and maybe you take a few significant hits. Obviously, when you leave that standing by, the Goblin Barrel can do a lot of damage. But this isn't the Goblin Challenge, is it? This yeah, is it a is real it. game, so there's just so much extra open to counter a Goblin deck. And we don't really see the super heavy Goblin decks with the Spear Goblin, Goblin Hut, Goblin Barrel, and Goblin Gang. Like yeah. We never really see those four cards in the same deck in professional level matches. Let's see, you know, what the mindset is uh, for Detonation there is with Pirameki obviously coming off a loss for his team. And, you know, they're moving as a unit. They're moving as a team, just suffering a loss and suffering a loss from last week. They had to carry on that load and try to get a win. Didn't happen in that last series. To trying to get it here. You see the, you know, he just seemed, seemed very nervous about his current position of you know, the necessity of uh, needing a win here uh, for his team. It really takes a lot of effort to get a win for Detonation Gaming, it seems like, as it's difficult to come by lately. Yeah, clawing yourself out of the pit when you're like 0-2, facing against the strongest team, that is such a difficult climb to make. Bringing yourself back up to the level where you can play good Clash Royale. But we do see KK19212, in blue for game with at the bottom of the screen, Pirameki for Detonation Gaming in red at the top. Let's see a full elixir charge for both teams here. You see the, the Royal Ghost being the first one being summoned. You see the log just being thrown out, partially to damage out the Royal Ghost, but mostly due to rotations here. Just minor. Banded. Uh, minor. Electro Wizard survives for one rotation, so. Very good standoff there, and the Miner takes care of that re relatively easy. Yeah, game with there. Have a decent advantage here, I believe, especially with the Miner coming down there and the Dark Prince. Uh -huh. Didn't Take connect to the tower. Taking all the damage, soaking up the damage himself, and you see the Electro Wizard trying to stop the charge coming in. Yeah, the Royal Ghost does turn around to hit the Miner instead of the Dark Prince, but it doesn't really matter at this point because the Electro Wizard managed to take care of that little issue. And there's a Bandit again. So uh -huh. we see that Detonation Gaming are going for the Bandit, and luckily for Game With, that Bandit didn't charge into that tower. Okay, but the Royal Ghost got a few hits. More significantly, the Zap pulling out the trade, not even allowing a single attack coming in from the, the Electro Wizard. Gonna be rather stable uh, between the two sides uh, so far. Yeah, and it seems that Detonation Gaming have a, about a three elixir advantage right now. That could be very important going forward. There's the Miner summoned at the back. Just going to walk all the way across the field instead of digging underneath the bridge. One poke coming in from the minions. Where they're gone out. There's the poison. There's the Bandit as well. The Bandit is going to charge onto the Dark Prince. The Electro Wizard is going to clean that up, but the Miner in the back has to be cleaned up by that Royal Ghost at the back of the thing. But so much damage that Miner is doing here. Still did a lot of chip damage, about 500 or so. Just going on that one summon right there. Yeah, but in kind detonation gaming, Spurameki does do quite a bit of damage onto that tower. But there's still so much going forward here from game with. Still see the poison being the effective counter against Electro Wizard. Going up there, even the Bandit. 
relatively wasted, you can say. Uh, throwing down another uh, unit into the puddle there. Yeah, the both players up. now drop down their Pekkas. Very interesting choices here. Pekka is going to go for the Miner, and the Ice Spirit does stop uh, Pyramekis Pekka from coming forward, but there is going to be a charge from a Bandit coming soon. Okay, the Bandit coming through and trying to just relieve the Pekka as the way he can. The, the Poison putting down nicely. Putting down damage onto the, all the units here, and going to be onto the 1445. Yeah, unfortunately, that Pekka has taken a lot of damage and will go down to the tower. That's why we see the Miner being dropped, but it's not going to matter. Tower will take it down. Poison as well to chip away a little bit more of damage, but Pyramechi is in a is in a bad spot right now. Okay, but Pyramechi just trying to strike back. He does have a lot of units available. The Pekka goes down, so the Bandit trying to make the rush. The Electro Wizard just trying to save oh, it. Oh, the charge oh, connects. The charge this is in. so much There's damage. There's nothing you can do. 900 damage gone in an instant. Shows that Pyramechi keeping the Pekka alive allowed the other units right behind it, even with the slim health, to stay alive to put that enormous amount of damage in a matter of seconds. Yeah, KK looked like he had enough there to defend, but it just died. Like, there was just, there was something there one minute, next minute it's gone, Bandit charges into the tower. And when a Bandit charges into your tower, that is so much damage being done there. And look what we have here. We have Detonation Gaming getting their first win on the board against Game With. So obviously it's not the Shun that we've been hyping about this entire time over the game. Uh, the week one we saw, but week two, they send out KK, hoping that he might be the one to, uh, even without Shun, get some wins on the board. But against Pyramechi now, really a redemption time for this team. Uh, gets that good win on the board here. We but like you said earlier, Simon, I think it, we saw KK kind of on the leading end of things. And eventually, once the time did run out, we might have seen KK just pull out the win just by an inch at the end when it came to the time difference. But that one last push that could not be stopped uh, by the KK there allowed Pyramid to get that difference to get the instant damage to get the win here. Yeah, KK was in control 99% of that game. And the 1% where he loses control is where Pyramid just takes the tower. Yeah. He... I don't want to say he threw the game, like he, he had such a strong advantage, but Pyramechi just kind of broke through that last little barrier to take the game. It was a measurable difference uh, that obviously KK will not be feeling very happy about. But someone who is very happy at the moment is Pyramechi, just about to uh, give his team the first win of a series and could do that if he can get another performance like that. Gonna get on to the second match very, very soon here between these two players. Yeah, interestingly enough, if Detonation Gaming do win this, this will be the only region that doesn't have a 3-0 standout winner and a 0-3 standout yeah. last place. See so what it they shows do. how close these teams are to each other. We didn't think that way week one, did we? No. You know, Simon, obviously with Game With, uh, we talked about Sean, and we talked about Sean and just what he did to show what Japan, uh, what power level they're standing at impresses quite a bit to the fact that there was no team that came close to game with in terms of competition but we were rightfully wrong on this one because we're seeing now Peter Mekki and the gang from Detonation Gaming can put up some numbers yeah, Dude, both what it takes here playing giant knight decks the decks look a little bit similar at this point in time so we're going to see another back and forth game between these two players where they're going to slowly eke out advantages piece by piece because this prince is just one shot two shots oh that was very close the charge would have made all the difference in the world and still kk on the winning end of things and some of the dark prince for the very first time have to smash his way across uh, past the giant there yeah kk kept his cool it did look like it was going to connect but he didn't overreact and drop anything there to try and stop it he calculated that perfectly Thought that a little bit of elixir difference would have made the world of a difference for him and still seeing that one goblin gonna rush in here. Gonna go up against the prince, so winning in now. One hits going by both sides. Is that the prince coming in from KK would be good enough to That's pull it. The tower. Okay. The Just charge enough. doesn't come through. Yeah, Pyramechi is ahead in elixir by by quite a bit actually. It's not four, I think, now that they're kind of even in the way it's going up. But KK has to answer the Dark Prince here, which puts him behind an elixir. 
Very interesting game here. Pirameki is doing incredibly well at his elixir management, whereas KK just doesn't seem to be as with it today as he was oh, previously. Oh, look at this poison, though. He's trying to make sure the Prince gets a charge down, but it's becoming increasingly difficult to do so when the poison is let down. Giants can be now pushed through uh, by the Prince here. Wonder if he can get a hit in. Snap just gonna try to push it uh, to make sure to push it a little bit further. Giant gets about two punches uh, onto the tower before it goes down. Yeah, it is also worth noting, noting that Elixir advantage doesn't mean anything if you're not damaging the towers, which Pirameki is not doing now. And he is behind just ever so slightly in the Elixir counts. Let's see, trade of Princes there. The Dark Prince and the Normal Prince now being affected by the poison. Coming in from the side of Pirameki. Trying to stop the rush as much as you can. The poison's not gonna do much damage uh, to the giant, so you have to be conscious. But the zap coming through, one more punch would have been the difference here. And Fireball, the last card hidden for KK. Cleanly finishes that off, so we saw what would have happened in game one as Ch he was chipping away and was winning out in trades. We didn't get that surprise all in one attack uh, from Pirameki that time around. We see KK with game with getting their first win here. Yeah, Pirameki had a four elixir advantage at one point in that game and then lost his advantage. Ended up being at a three elixir disadvantage and that just killed any defense that he could try to put down. Yeah. And that just makes it really difficult to come back from. When you're three elixir down, when it's double elixir time, that's, that's a mountain to climb. It really is, and Pirameki seemingly looks defeated because it wasn't really for that last push that made all the difference, but it was the consistent buildup and the snowball that behind that he was consistently uh, losing out in trains. And once that builds up and up and up, you know that Pirameki, you're on the losing end of things as tomorrow time goes by. Eventually in overtime, you're gonna end up with that one tower going against your end. Just couldn't do it, could he? Pirameki first game we we're really surprised he did play really really well in that first game this game he played really really well for the longest of times but about three quarters of that way through KK just turned it up a gear and just walked through every time every push he was doing was dealing damage whereas Pirameki's pushes every push he did was stopped yeah. very early on and it seems like Pirameki's all the summons that he did was mostly for the defensive end and Really just traded units just for the sake of defending out. And through that defense, we saw KK just pulling out one hit, two hits onto the tower, especially with the giant uh, doing a lot of damage with each punch that it did. Now we know that made all the difference over time when it came to the three minutes of consistently doing that uh, for the side of KK in game with, which allowed him to get the win at the end. Seems like Pirameki took the damage and feels like he needed a timeout there. Yeah, the timeout from Detonation Gaming here is it's needed for this team they do need to try and get the mental the mental state of the players to be in the right place to be able to win like coming back after losing to k against kk here pirameki might be feeling like no matter what we do we just can't win as a team like we're just not performing well we're not able to take a victory i think game two was the biggest indication of that because we saw very similar decks from both players. It was really just a mirror deck with giant centric uh, double prince meta and just trying to rush it in, trying to get as many punches with the giant onto the towers, which again, it was literally the same deck. Let's always see the same levels being in a tournament level of format. Still, we saw the trades going against Pyramekis end. So th that knowing that, you just gotta get something right and a timeout was needed there. Yeah, I think if I was Detonation Gaming after this week, if we go 0-3, I would spend the week looking at positioning. Yeah. Positioning is what makes and breaks defensive. Sure. And I think that is where Detonation Gaming are falling short because it's not the skill on the attacks. I think it's just their overall positioning in defense. They're not having enough licks to go forward. I see the second game going over to KK. Meaning that this last game will decide it for either player here in. Once again, defense very successful coming from the side of KK. Band we're looking back at Pirameki's oh, first nice. deck, which won him the first game, and it was an incredibly oh, good deck with that log. So clean. So much value from that log. Wow, that was a that fireball. Very hard to pull out of when you're on the offensive end of things, trying to stop the defense coming from your opponent. 
Very well done. And with the log to cleanly uh, finish that off. Very nicely done by KK. There's a Royal Ghost coming out here. It's going to find its way down to the tower unless, there we go, Dark Prince summon. That's going to soak up some of that damage from the Royal Ghost. The Royal Ghost probably will go down here because of the tower as well. And doesn't really do that much damage to the Dark Prince. It's going to continue going forward. Minor needed here on the defense. Soaking up the damage uh, coming from the Dark Prince, obviously. They're really going to be easily swallowed up uh, by the Mega Minion there. Once again, is that being used just for rotation purposes? Fireball taking out the minions. Doesn't want to see those come near the tower because they do a lot of damage, surprisingly enough. Like so minus one elixir trade on that instance just to wipe out the, the minions and also damage a few on the tower. Not a shabby damage, obviously, coming from the fireball onto the tower. Yeah, Bandit there charging into the, uh, the prince, making sure that no damage was done. And oh. there's a log again. That's just a one elixir already, right? It really is, and you're just talking about right now full on elixir. What can he do with this? And see the Dark Prince taking care of relatively easily, but this is Mecha. a very strong push here coming out from Pirameki. Will he be able to do it? Oh, charge look at the into bandit. the electro. Look at the bandit. That bandit charge is still alive. so much work. Oh, okay, so he gets it out just barely. But there's still a Pekka here. Oh, that is Pekka bad was news twice. bears for KK. Oh, did he miss on the did he miss on the fireball on the Pekka though? No, he managed to just connect it, but the Pekka has so much health. Wow. Miner here finishing off this tower. 200, 200 that's damage. it. That's it. That's basically it for the side when he has a zap on the other end. If that does not finish him off, 11 HP and 200 will be quite easy to take off uh, with the poison there. So if this push doesn't do it for KK, we might see Pirameki uh, get that first win. Five seconds to go. What be, he's been waiting for this entire time. You see the smiles coming from his teammates. And you see Detonation Gaming after such a struggle for two weeks. You can see them picking out the first win. What, a, what this should mean for these guys. I'm sure it's much huge than what we can kind of imagine for ourselves. That's got to be a huge relief for the team because now they finally have a W on the board. Yeah. Because most of their games, they lost 0 2, 0 2, 0 2. This means so much to the team. And we might see this bounce forward into the 2v2. And we can see Detonation Gaming taking game with who are our favorites last week. We've seen momentum shifts have a big effect, uh, obviously, on teams, especially if they were struggling. And when they get a momentum shift onto a positive end of things, they can push that forward and pull off performances that we haven't seen from them before. And we might see kind of an indication of what that could mean for Destination Gaming now picking up their uh, first win, maybe in a very, very long time here. Yeah, it's been so long for this team. Two weeks, three games. I mean, they've got to be feeling good right now. But I'm still interested about this Goblin Barrel ban. I don't think it was targeted at all. I mean, I have to just imagine through our heads what was going through his mind when he went to the, the Goblin Barrel ban. We think uh, there are much more bans kind of susceptible to really working out for here. If he had a hard time with any other cards, then we can just ban that out instead of a Goblin Barrel. But we'll s that, that mystery is still closed within the seal book here until uh, we get to find, it, find the answer over time here. But... In a few more instances that we might get the answer to that. Yeah, now we're going into set number two, a 2v2 game. We have Amaterasu and Yuhio for game with. Both these players last week were really, really strong. And we have Lewis and Ku for Detonation Gaming. Lewis, we saw earlier play the 1v1. He lost 2-0. Yep. Ku, we've seen a little bit of Ku, actually, in 1v1, I think. Yeah, last week he played 1v1. He banned the minor and was going for a Lava Hound deck. Okay, so we're gonna see uh, these two players make their appearance with Shun. Not on the field now. Just might have to miss him for an entire week here. Not get to see the superstar standoff that we saw from him making great performances last week. And just missing out on this week here. Gonna see these two players, uh, see what they can do uh, for a game with here. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to next week's games. It's going to be Japan and Korea next week. Okay. If I'm reading this correctly, right? The 11th of, yeah, the 11th. It's so it's going to be on be, Friday. Yeah, so we're going to be seeing these teams again next week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. See what they do here, because still we're yet to decide, you know, who the best teams are uh, in Japan. We thought it was game with. Obviously suffering our first loss. Uh, we haven't seen 
from them quite a bit so far. Means that might have to do a little bit of reevaluation and a reevaluation of, of, of another team here with Detonation Gaming. You no, know, we thought they were uh, struggling definitely for the first weekend, having to struggle for just a little bit further against uh, Pono Sports. Means that you know we kind of want to see Detonation Gaming as one of the weaker teams in Japan, but now getting a win against what we thought was a stronger team uh, in game with. I have to just see what Detonation Gaming really has in, the, in their potential. Yeah, it will make such a statement to the Japanese region. Like, we're not the worst team. We're not 0-3, and we just took out Game With, who a lot of players have actually been respecting. There's been a lot of talk in other regions as well that maybe the Japanese region is quite scary to go to. But if Detonation Gaming here take Game With, it shows that all these teams are relatively balanced. It's a very even competition in Japan. And that might be scary for teams from SEA and from Korea going over there because with the team they thought were the strongest gets taken down by the team they thought they were the weakest. We know that you know the three regions at play here for Clash Royale League Asia uh, are Korea, Japan, and Southeast Asia going at each other. You know, we're going to get the clashes starting uh, between the regions uh, starting next week. but. Let's get the match underway here uh, with these two teams here. Of course, the uh, Tornado Band, very expected. Yep. Coming in, but the Balloon Band also becoming a common house uh, when it talks about uh, what bands are very well seen uh, in 2v2 matches. We see the Lava Hound and the Balloon combo work very effectively for a lot of these teams can, that can maneuver properly. Means that the Balloon will be out of the play on this one. Yeah, banning the Balloon doesn't kind doesn't really remove the Lava Hound out of contention here. We saw last time that Detonation Gaming used the Lava Hounds with pretty good effects. They, they were getting very far forwards. Their pushes were doing a lot of damage. But I don't know, man. I just... Banning the Balloon? I, I don't know what that says as the team. It, 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 for me, you know, when I saw the Balloon bands coming through, uh, we saw... Obviously, the Lava Hound Balloon is the biggest example of that, but when they feel like they can defend out the Lava Hound in itself, the additional balloon that comes in right behind that becomes such a complex mathematics to make sure you got the right defense intact to defend out both at the same time. Of course, that you know, Lava Hound being such a slow unit, over time, that the extra five elixirs will build up and you can summon that balloon right behind it. And even with just a Infernal Dragon, you would just take out the Lava Hound, but that Balloon is still moving on, just ignoring all the defensive units, just going straight for the tower, making drops after drops, and we've seen that happen before from teams that can maneuver quite well. So I can understand from a perspective when you ban out the balloon, you're just looking to focus right on the lava hound or maybe even other units that has to do something with the balloon. Yeah, at, we just saw Amaratsu, uh, Amaterasu. Yeah. Uh, he actually went four games last week. He ended up tying the third set, going into that fourth set. He played a lot of P.E.K.K.A., a lot of mini P.E.K.K.A. actually. Surprisingly enough, okay. he played a lot of mini P.E.K.K.A. He actually played the Expo. Uh, he's played Night Witch, Dark Prince, Golems. A very big possibility here for game with. Still, Golem, uh, centered around Dex. Uh, still very prevalent in 2v2s. So we've seen that as the main support to push around in. Obviously banning at the balloon means that less Lava Hound might be seen uh, when compared to if that card was available for both of the players here. That means that be both Game With and Detonation Gaming in this 2v2 format. Uh, we're gonna try to see if that's the case with Golem being centric to the, the deck they're building around here. Yeah, it's a very, very good bet that we are going to see Golems because they are so, so good in 2v2, when you build up that gigantic damage ball behind it, and then suddenly, oh, what's that Dark Prince? And you just see like everything just go, get out of here, and yeah. it just instantly evaporates. Maybe what you kind of saw from uh, from the other game, just we, from 1v1, where we saw Pyramiki just destroy everything, 900 damage, just in a heartbeat, when you have a couple of units back in the day, and what you could see from a 2v2, if you build your uh, golem cast, uh, you, if you can build the, the golem deck just right, and you can have the supporting units right behind the golem as it makes the rush forward slowly and slowly, you might see explosions of a crown tower just right away from a gecko. Yeah, I, 
there's so much damage usually behind the golem. As you said, it just destroys princess towers, destroys the king's tower. Yeah. I've seen so many golem pushes that take out the princess tower, still so healthy, and it just moves forward, continues to go on, takes out the crown tower as well. Really important to see you know, whether they can work with this. Just trying to figure out you know, if they're going to be eccentric to uh, the push here, Ed. We'll try to get into the game to see what 2v2 can work out here. Uh, it's really important to see, you know, what's going to be happening uh, with these two teams. Obviously, with uh, the two teams, at Detonation Gaming currently on the winning end of things uh, against Game With. See if they can do it here. Well, this next match is going to be important. Yeah, so here we are. Going into game number one of set two, we have Yurio and Amu, Amu, I keep saying Amaratsu. Why do I keep saying Amaratsu? Amaterasu for game with Lewis and Ku for Detonation Gaming in the red at the top. Tombstone poisoned straight down from Detonation Gaming, not taking any of that Tombstone. Trying Funny make, business here. Trying to make that charge as effective as possible uh, for the Dark Prince there. Could mean that you're just moving forward with it. Of course, the defensive end of the Dark Prince will get the better end of things. Oh, we're going to see the, the rocket right away just really just ignoring uh, the Infernal Dragon. Not going to have any of it. See that right away coming through. Yeah, both both teams here shutting down so much from each other. We've seen the Tombstone shut down instantly with the poison. We saw that Infernal Dragon just get completely shut down with a rocket. And here we see Golem wow. Pekka. This is an incredibly elixir heavy push coming right here. Oh, this is all in or nothing here. Trying with the Prince to speed up the units. Even the Pekka to the Golem. Let's see the, some of the Pekka on the one end uh, from the side of Yuhiro and Materasu. Yeah, the defending Pekka there for game with targeted the golem so that means the pekka from detonation gaming may get through here oh. and if that connects with the tower it's going to do so much damage oh this might be an all in for that pays off for the side of detonation gaming one swipe second Two. swipe and that all in connects before the tombstone can be summoned to knock off all the attempts so you lost the tombstone you lost all the attacking units but you're feeling very happy in the way that Detonation Gaming literally just used 20 elixirs all at once for that wall and push. Yeah, and there's been so much time between that push building up and that push connecting that Detonation Gaming mostly have their elixir back. So they could go on for round two here. And this 50 second mark is the last time you can push a golem out in normal time. There you go, pushing the units once again with the Dark Prince. The rocket being used effectively there, but only gonna knock up the shield from the Dark Prince. The Electro is connecting with the Inferno Dragon on the defense. That means those golems will be able to connect onto the tower again, but they are only baby golems. So many beams being crossed here. Everything gets mopped up, but there is still that little bit of offense left for Detonation Gaming. This Inferno oh, Dragon is gonna walk up to the I tower. I don't know about that I double ice spirit, though. That was a little bit off. I don't know if that was actually needed there. It might be just for rotation, but we're seeing the charges coming for the two Dark Prince. Charging Pekka in here. No prisoners on the defense. Instantly wiping out that Dark Prince. And the Dark Princes do connect on the King's Tower. Wow. Detonation Gaming, what has happened in this game? Where were you last <laughs> match? Last match and last week all together, isn't it, Simon? We see Whoa. this team just on a roll here and game with. Looks baffled in the way they couldn't just defend out that first run coming in from you talking about Golem, you talking about Pekka, you talking about the Prince just pushing him from the back and all the supporting you see as you get the Elixir turnaround in. Wow, what a push that Detonation Gaming and just tried to effort all in. That was an all in or nothing effort. If that did not work out, the defense coming out uh, from Game With could have been tremendous uh, towards the side of Detonation Gaming. Yeah, but luckily that all in push did wipe out the defense. If it wipes out the defense, that puts you in such a strong position that that all-in is no longer an all-in, yeah. if you get my drift. They can come back. Since the defense has been wiped out, they've got time to rebuild their army. They've got time to respond to things because now their elixir is built back up. They can cycle their cards a little bit. That is so important at that point. We're going to see a timeout calling out for game with. I would take a time if I was their team as well. Quite a heavy hit uh, towards the... 
the mentality there because that was a huge hit to take, really. Uh, coming from a game with really didn't expect that. Just an all in being a very effective for Detonation Gaming means that game with has to be better prepared uh, once we get into the second game to make sure they avoid a 2 0 defeat that would end up in a 2 0 set defeat uh, for game with, which would be something that's unheard of. Yeah, we were not expecting game with to be challenged in this match. Yeah. And Detonation Gaming have just pulled out everything. Everything that they should have been pulling out last week and earlier on, they're pulling out against Game With. So it's showing that against the big teams, against the teams that we think are super strong, Detonation Gaming are pulling out all the stops. They're pulling out all the skills, all the decks. But they're not doing it against other teams. You can see they're having a bit of a, you know, a bit of a joke and a laugh here. As you should, I think. I don't know if you saw that, but one of the devices dropped off the podium and hit the floor. So I'm not sure if they've managed to break the device that they're supposed to be using. I'm, I'm sure they have the highest standard and the highest quality of devices that one drop should not affect the device whatsoever. We're trying to get the best experience for the players to play at the most optimal level of Clash Royale. Yeah, but it doesn't matter how high-end the device is, how good the device is, you drop it at the wrong angle, Ooh. it's gone. It doesn't matter. You could have literally a bulletproof case, but if you drop it on one specific angle, your screen just goes, psh, it's over. Yeah, I feel like you had that experience before. It's too many times. Too oh many my times. I, I've had to repair so many phones. <laughs> it's all right. But we're back to this, and you know we're back to us, and hopefully you know we're, there's no big issues coming about. Seems like the this camera is going back to uh, the studio there at Japan, where the players are being stationed at to play. As you know, that play players will join us uh, here at OGN once we get to the, the regional crossovers. And we'll have some also the Korean players join uh, the Japanese studio and also the, the studio in Taiwan to have a kind of crossover home and away match format uh, for all these uh, nations here. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Japan versus Korea and the Japan versus SEA games. Yeah. Like, I like the idea of two different metas clashing together. And We've seen that each region has a very specific style of 1v1, very specific style of 2v2. And it's going to be very interesting to see how they clash against each other. And how the meta clashes really, because it's going to be about the interaction between what we thought was hugely different in the way a person thinks about how to win a game, a game of Clash Royale. You know, once that kind of intermeans with each other and just trying to interact to see which one comes out to be the stronger. Of course, with the difference in the individual talents that we might start to notice once the teams start to clash off, will be an exciting uh, prospect to look at. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest games that I am looking forward to, Brent Esports versus King's Own Dragon X. Wow. The two 3-0 juggernauts in their division. Both these teams have been so, so good. I cannot wait, and it's like two, three weeks away. It really is. And it feels so far. <laughs> you know, the best games are for the last, obviously, and Brain Esports really dominant in Southeast Asia. No one in Southeast Asia looks even close uh, to the level that has been set by the standard of those guys coming from the Philippines. But talk about Kings and Dragon X. From the get-go, they were expected to be the best team, holding the best player, arguably, in Korea with the Expo Master. And, and they're forming around just pure talent and having a good coaching staff to organize and mingle these uh, guys together. And we've seen that success turn out in a 3-0 undefeated streak for Kings of Dragon and same for Brand Esports. So we could see this going either way. And that match, you say, Simon, could become very, very exciting. But will Game With be able to bring it back and stand alongside these juggernauts at 3-0 at the top of the table? Honestly, I'm not sure. Detonation Gaming have shown today that they can play Clash Royale. Really has, and uh, obviously, game with with Shun and game with without Shun has been severely different, uh, kind of to a more of a warring extent. Even in trying to see, you know, whether that is the kind of the key figure uh, where it makes a difference in how the team uh, interacts with each other. I have to find out once we do get into the later weeks uh, to see whether more appearances of Shun makes a difference in the actual results. But we're still still focused on this Shun Les uh, game with whether they can still hold it out against Detonation Gaming. Kind of weird to say something that we haven't thought about as we enter this one. Yeah, I just want to point out to people who are watching, 
there is some kind of delay going on right now. Okay. Uh, we should be in the game already. But yeah. Something's gone wrong. Maybe communication. Maybe the, the maybe the phone drop. The phone drop. Wow. It's, it's unsure right now what's going on. Oh, so we actually are confirmed that there is a problem with the phone. So, wow. Hold it. Oh my. But hopefully we'll be able to jump into these games. You can see their hands were off the devices. That's because they were not allowed really to touch their devices between that because they uh -huh. only have a set limited time to change their decks. And it seems now that Game With are getting their time out again since there was a lot of kerfuffle sure. over that phone. So it really wasn't a fair allotted time for that single minute to have a big effect on Game With when they initially called the timeout after that. That drop did happen. Of course, yeah. hoping it, that it didn't really affect the device too much that this competition can still uh, go along, but now they're going to get the timeout. 20 seconds just about uh, left on the clock for Game With to really pick it back together. All right, pick things up and try to move forward and hopefully have a good game against uh, Destination Gaming again is what we're all hoping for for a good match here. Yeah, I am really hoping that this extended timeout here hasn't affected Detonation Gaming. That they're keeping their focus, they're keeping their cool, and they're going to head into this as fresh as they would have if there was no break. Right. If there was no timeout. Because it really can affect the players. They got one more timeout. We don't know why. It's what the producer told us. Thank you, producer. We know... We're confused too because this is basically their third timeout. Yeah, I mean, the rules say one timeout yeah. per team, per match. Game with Hero just taking all the timeouts. Sure, this was kind of approved uh, by the directors uh, over at the studios in Japan. Yeah, Not the referees are very, very sure. scary people. Like, if you slightly disobey one of the rules in the book, yeah. they will throw it at you, kind Woo. of thing. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want the rule book thrown at me. I don't quite even, a bit. Yeah, it's it's quite thick from what I know. So. If you get hit at the right angle, we're talking about angles here all day. Yeah, I know. Days. You get hit at the right angle, like suddenly Woo. your your head just stops working, and oh. like you have to find a replacement head. You know, phone can stop working, head can stop working at just as equally. But you know, one more second, see if this is the last time out coming in, and we just might not be getting into the game. But we're gonna just try to hold it through to make sure uh, we're ready to get into this game. More, make sure that game with is ready to face off against Detonation Gaming after they suffered a pretty harsh defeat. Obviously, we didn't expect this coming in uh, from against Detonation Gaming. We thought it would be easily to take care of, but starting for that 1v1 now, the 2v2 is becoming a little bit of a troublesome. We're dropping games here and there for Game With. It's really impossible to really see what this means, but Detonation Gaming, I wonder if we can come back from this. Yeah, Detonation Gaming were joking and laughing just before we jumped back to us. And now we're not sure what's going on. Everyone's hands off device, which means there's no more changes. There's no more strategy changes, no more deck changes. So these guys are locked in. We're just waiting for this game to kick up and start again. Okay, so we're back to us. Yeah. So it just means like we need a little more time. Okay, I've got a question. It. Yeah. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Duck, you say? Yeah, a duck. Okay, so 100 duck-sized horse. Yeah, or one horse-sized duck. It, wouldn't one horse-sized duck be a little bit better? I don't know, man. You can kick 100 duck-sized horses, but a horse-sized duck, man, ducks are scary creatures. I mean, my legs would get tired from kicking 100 <laughs> uh, duck-sized horses. That'd be, that'd be a lot of uh, swinging of the foot, as you would say. <laughs> we play football sometimes, but... Uh, even kicking 100 footballs uh, can become difficult, difficult at times. Maybe kick it for days and comes that random question. Just trying to kill time. It's very nice, but... We're still waiting to get into this game. What I really want is to see whether Destiny Game really has something in them that we haven't seen so far. That's what we want to see. I got a, I got a different question. All right. <laughs> Imagine if you could put eight of the same card in one deck within oh, Clash Royale. Oh, okay. What would be... The strongest deck you wow, can think of. Wow, that is actually a really good question. Uh, hmm. I think Hog Rider might be a bit too much, but then you would have nothing on defense. Sure, but... Logs? Just keep throwing out log after log after log after log. 
that'd be fast. It'd be a quick rotation. It does about 80 damage, which is just about as equal as uh, Arrow, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, talk about just that, the, the mathematics behind that. 80 something damage for one long, two elixirs. Three of that does about 240, right? Mm -hmm. But a rocket with a six elixir usage does a little more than 300, I believe. Just around the same level, mm -hmm. tournament level base. So but that means, you know, you can defend out with the log, obviously. Yeah. But you can defend out with the rocket as well. But maybe just with the trade of the both and just purely based on elixir, that case, you know, rocket would work. But I think units actually might be better than spells on that occasion if you can have just the eight cards of the same thing. And you talk about Hog Rider being an option, just literally bumped out the tower because there's nothing else to stop it. But you can also have maybe eight golems. I, I think eight golems would be so heavy. Yeah. That it, you, you'd only, you're only able to get like one golem out every, what, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. So if your opponent's playing like any ordinary deck, or even if they have something like unlimited Inferno Dragons, you're never going to be able to push. I also think of... Bandits might be a good deck. Bandit. All bandits, like charging in from everywhere. Uh, just putting it on both sides. Put it on both sides, put two together, and like... Okay. I, I could see bandits being a good one. If you have uh. eight bandits in a deck, that would be... Ridiculously strong. I feel like you're cheating on this one because I feel like you thought this ahead while you're just asking me on the spot. I I, I'm not lying. I just thought of this okay. question. All right. So, yeah, bandit, sure. Uh, what about eight tombstones? How do you deal with that? Eight graveyards. Yeah, eight graveyards. Oh my god, that would that would be quite scary. There'd be skeletons for days, and you can use a graveyard pretty well defensively. Sure. Too. Yeah. So that question was not good <laughs> enough to get us into the game. We still have a few more time to kill, and hopefully we can get into this one. I feel like I, sh I've, I was the one that jinxed it by initially saying that we might have a problem and before even the producer told us. So we definitely do have a problem, it seems like. It's yeah. been prolonging for a bit. Uh, it definitely has nev haven't had a really delay uh, this long without any type of reason. So there definitely must be a type of reason where uh, we're kind of be extended uh, over to this time without getting into the next game. So. Just a reminder, if you are uh, joining us uh, just now, we saw Detonation Gaming struggling uh, throughout the two weeks of play. Now this is their third attempt. After two attempts did not go their way, ended up in a loss. This is their first, a third, and final chance in their regionals to pick up a W on the board. And they're really close to doing that because uh, they won out the 2v2, that one game. And then winning out the second one could give them a good win across the board. And they already won the 1v1. So. Just a win here could end the series without even an ace match needed. Yeah, I really wish we'd have seen this Detonation Gaming about an hour ago when they were playing against Ponos because this Detonation Gaming, they've looked dominant, especially in this 2v2 match. It, it feels like it was about an hour ago now. Like, it feels so long ago, but that 2v2 game was just so well played by both Lewis yeah. and Ku. And we've seen Lewis in 2v2. He played the 1v1 earlier. Lewis, maybe he is the 2v2 crutch because he does have the lowest amount of oh. trophies out of everyone. But it does look like we're about to get back into this game. Finally, Simon, you don't ask random questions. We get into the game. That's the theory now from that one. All right, then you ask the random questions. All right. Okay, game that. with Yuhiro and Amaterasu in blue at the bottom. Just in case you forgot, Lewis Anku in red at the top for Detonation Gaming. We see Tombstone. There's a Dark Goblin, a very wow. popular card in the Japanese region. We see it being cleaned away just with the one use of the log, but like you said, it literally activates as a turret, really, uh, for the Dark Goblin to send it from the other side. Yeah, that Mega Minion had no direction there, was just wandering around the middle, which means it does get quite far forward and gives decent amount of elixir return there for Detonation Gaming. Okay, we're going to see the Golem being summoned uh, by the side of Detonation Gaming, but it's going to be countered uh, by the P.E.K.K.A. to stop it in his tracks. Yeah. Fortunately as well, the Golems did push P.E.K.K.A. Uh, out of the range of that Inferno, but at the bottom right of the screen... Great, poison! So much damage coming out wow. from that combo. Nine elixir there, dealing just under a thousand damage. We saw game with trying to counter that with just the bat summon, but we know how that goes when you have the graveyard poison. Bats are gone in an instant, and so is so much of the HP 
now for game with and Dead's Nation Gaming once again very dominating the fact that we kind of use the golem as a scapegoat really just to provide the distraction and they put out the graveyard and poison when all the defensive units were invested into killing off the golem really leaving a game with to not really have anything else to defend out against such a strong push there yeah, that rocket did connect with the tower taking it down to 2100 and the golem push now coming forward for game with Will this connect in the way that it needs to connect here for game with? One hit, two hits. Yes, it is. This Golem is dealing so much damage wow. to that tower. Still has yet to explode for all two of them there. You can see the 844, the final count. As we see the rush coming in now from Destination Gaming. You can see that another um, poison and graveyard combo once again. And look how quickly that tower is defending. Oh, the Dark Prince Dr. is undamaged. Prince. It hasn't lost his shield. Oh. Just lost his shield. Whoa, Dark Prince getting connected onto that tower without losing its shield at all. That was a surprising way of defending out against the graveyard poison combo. He sent out the Pekka. A no. very slowly attacking unit. Doesn't move very fast. No. Not the kind of card you need. But on the other end, that tower for Detonation Gaming does only have 112, and we know that Game With have that rocket. So that tower is dead when it needs to be. Oh, we're going to see it again. The Graveyard Poison really has been rivaled out quite well. Where's the rocket? There's a Miner. Does finish it off in time with the Poison as well. But the push here from oh, Detonation Gaming is oh, so strong. Oh, Golem's connected. Poison's oh, connecting. Oh, my goodness. And it goes to overtime just in the moment of nick of time. And Detonation Gaming, what a play coming in from both sides. That Golem push cannot be stopped. We talked about the first uh, Graveyard Poison combo. Detonation Gaming, you see them on the winner chart for the very first time. Really good to see them on there. This completely opens up the Japanese region. Detonation ga uh, Game with 2-1. Detonation Gaming 1-2. Fav, if they win today, they'll be 2-1 as yeah, well. Yeah, they'll be 2-1. So close. Every team here can beat anybody. Why why wasn't Detonation Gaming this good in the first match today? First match today and first match of week one you talk about. Detonation Gaming has been rather disappointing in the mistakes they made. It's not about the other team overdoing uh, to kind of go overcome uh, the, what the Destination Gamers were trying to bring out. It was more of Destination Gaming making these very critical mistakes at key moments that costed them very serious games. And we've seen that that leading on to you know, more games losing, more and more games losing. And that eventually became losses all around for the very first game of week one and now the very first game of week two. Now they come back to a mistake-free uh, Destination Gaming that seemed very much an overhandle uh, for the side of game with. Yeah, whatever Detonation Gaming's coach did between match one and match two today, he deserves a raise. Yeah. No matter how much they're paying in, double it. Because whatever he said to the team during that break completely transformed this team from just an okay team to a really good team. Can have an interview now. Detonation, congratulations. Let's hear words from them. How do you feel about this win? Now, I feel very relieved. But the first game against Ponos uh, wasn't very good and we lost. So uh, I was very sad, but I, I was able to make up for it. Uh, so what have you planned against this team? So we watched uh, past games before and we made strategies against what they were weaknesses. Congratulations and thank you. And Matsumoto. And the coach's um, strategy observation and studies. I think is what made us win today. So is the, co the coach leading the team? The, the information that the coach has is always accurate 
and his、um, leading is very helpful in our winning strategies. And Ku. How do you feel about today? The golem,、um, very good with the golem. And I was able to trust my teammate making the strategies during the game. And I think that was a successful one on one versus two on two golem plan is different. Yes, it is.、Uh, my teammate needs to protect me. And the teammate different,、uh, it's very different. It doesn't work. so... And I think the practice made it、uh, our win perfect today. And Hiramiki against Ponos,、uh, I had a straight lose, which I was very disappointed in. So I needed to make a revenge. But I pulled myself up and I was able to make a win. And our teamwork went well today, so we were able to win. So you lost the previous game and it was your first, but you did the first game. There was a lot of pressure on you. How do you feel? I was very nervous, but I was able to somehow pull it up. That was the interview coming in.、Uh, very nicely done by Detonation Gaming. I know that how much this means、uh, for them to finally pick up a win. Obviously, a 0 3 record book and a 1 2 looks very different when you go out in regionals in a more of a successful role. Yeah, it's incredibly different for your mentality, the way you're going to be playing in the next week. But I just want to say, I was looking through some of the player information. Matsumoto's motto fall down seven times. Stand up eight. Perfect, perfect、wow. motto for this team right now because、Just、they fell down.、That. Yeah, they fell down seven times. They, they stood up on the eighth time. They, they should be going home happy tonight. Never give up attitude. It's the kind of the summary of that motto. And we're going to see, you know, they're feeling very good with Detonation King being finally picking up a win. But we're going to go into a short break to see if we can get the last series underway. So we're going to get the short break. We're going to be back with Japan's last series of the day.